Microsoft have officially bought Bethesda. It's a sort of old news, but I've been hearing a lot of people wanting me to talk about it. I haven't been paying a lot of attention to it, if I'm being honest with you, but I've done a bit of research. I've done some digging. I've done some reading, and I thought I'm going to give you my thoughts because I, I, I've got a few things I want to say about this. Now, David, I'm not sure if you heard the news. Microsoft has bought Bethesda. So Bethesda, just so I... If I, if I, if I recall correctly, yes. Bethesda is most famous for making the... Fallout games and the Elder Scrolls games. Yes, correct, correct. correct. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they were run by Todd Howard. Yep. Yeah, and then he fucked royally fucked Fallout seventy six. Right. Um, and yeah, I mean Skyrim is obviously one of the greatest games ever made. Of course. But um, yeah, I didn't know that um that they were purchased. So the whole company is now under Microsoft. Yes, correct. Correct. Um, do we like Microsoft? Like, I is, mean, I yeah. mean, here's the thing. I like Microsoft. Mm. I mean, I, I used to be an Xbox guy. I talked about that yeah. in the last episode of the show. Mm. But they've been fucking up a lot yeah. with Halo and just trying to make that last generation console, the Xbox One, they were trying to make it, focus it on being some sort of like entertainment device for everything rather than a game console. And they missed the mark where Sony's like, well, we're going to make fucking awesome games and that's going to be our focus. And they just dominated because of that because that's what people want to play. And they want to play... Gamers want to play games. And Microsoft have got it now, but the problem is they've spent so many years not making games that they're... We're now in this period where there's no Xbox exclusives yet. They're just telling us we've got things coming. And they've been making moves and they've gone and bought Bethesda. Now, a lot of people are upset, David. And in some ways, understandably so, because mm. they feel like... Wait, no, it's not good. This is a third-party company that makes some of the biggest games in the world, or at least used to. You know, Fallout 4 was quite a disappointment for too many fans. That was still a decent enough game, but it, it, it was... Okay, it, it was Dude. okay, man. It was okay. Oh, man. You know? When you play... I remember playing Fallout New Vegas, right? On, like, my shitty laptop in this apartment in Brunswick. Like, and I remember just sitting down, and it was... I didn't have a massive screen. Mm. I didn't have anything. And yeah. I played Fallout New Vegas... And I just fucking loved it so much. Dude. Still one of my favourite games of yeah. all time, for sure. Well, It was awesome. Over the years, Bethesda have sort of fallen down ever since, I'd say, Skyrim after that. You know, they did an amazing job with that. One of the greatest games of all time, as you said earlier. Uh, and the thing is, people don't want those third-party developers. They're like, what's good about it being exclusive? You know, they're, they're stopping certain gamers from being able to access those games. And they feel like it's like Microsoft being, like it's a dick move almost for a company that owns another company to make the game exclusive. And there's the questions of, well, is it going to be exclusive? People feel like they haven't been clear with what's exclusive, what's not exclusive. Is Elder Scrolls 6 going to be everywhere, but other games going to be exclusive? Like, where does it stop and where does it begin? Well, i got a few thoughts. And the first one is, Bethesda doesn't just get bought because Microsoft decided to go up to their door one day and go, hey, we're going to buy you. That's not how business works. Bethesda was open to being bought, which means Microsoft probably, almost certainly, weren't the only people at the table when it came to purchase. Microsoft were just willing to pay the most money, but also even the business relationship. There was a round table a couple of weeks ago that Microsoft guys, Bethesda people, got together and did a bit of a round table talking about their partnership, what it means the excitement of the future, and it looked like they're actually quite excited. They obviously have quite a great working relationship with each other already, and that's nice to see. Maybe they didn't have it with Sony. Maybe there's other companies, not Sony, not Microsoft, but other game publishers that were like would have bought Bethesda. So someone was going to buy Bethesda probably. Companies don't just get bought because, right? So that's the first thing. So if someone's going to buy them, you probably want it to either be Sony or Microsoft, right? Or at least the company that you know Bethesda's going to work best with. And at least a positive to take from is that it looks like Bethesda and Microsoft actually are excited to work together. That's good. That's a good sign. I'd say that's a positive, David. The other thing is, I don't know if I'm excited about Microsoft owning Bethesda, but I'm certainly probably more excited than I would be if Sony had bought Bethesda. If Sony bought Bethesda, I'd be like, stop it. He's already dead when it came to the Xbox, you know? It's like, well, what more does Sony need over Xbox? Like, it's just insane. What, are they, what do they have left? Microsoft, you've got nothing. They're just getting absolutely pummeled already. 
what Microsoft is doing is making some moves to at least be like, oh, right, they've actually got some first party exclusives, some platforms that, that make sense to build their brand, to build that loyalty, to build that association in your head that when you think of an Elder Scrolls game, you're going to now think of the Xbox. Companies do it all the time, even with third party games. You see Assassin's Creed every year flip flop and change in their trailers when you see it on TV and at the end they'll either have a PlayStation 4 or whatever or an Xbox. And it just depends on what contract they've signed with Microsoft or Sony that year with that particular game. And what they the reason they do that is to build your association in your brain that when you see that game, you're like, I like that game, I want to play that game, oh it's on PlayStation. Even though it's not an exclusive, companies do that to build an association in your brain with the console. So what Microsoft's now doing is a permanent exclusivity and association and it builds brand loyalty and that's what it's doing but the thing of it is 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 that even a good purchase at this point in time where does bethesda stand in popular games companies 10 years ago what a genius purchase skyrim the company that just brought out skyrim which is 10 years ago david skyrim came out this november 10 years ago the elder scrolls 5 skyrim came out but since then, you've had Fallout 4, let down. It's not some terrible, awful game, but let down. And then Fallout 76, one of the... If it wasn't for Cyberpunk, it would have been the biggest disaster in games the last five years. If it wasn't for Cyberpunk, it came out last year. So is it even a good move? I would argue we don't know. So people are saying, oh my god, it's such a dick move for Microsoft. Well, is it? Do you even want to play The Elder Scrolls 6? Do you even want to play the next Fallout game or whatever Bethesda's working on, Starfield? I would argue we don't even know whether it was a smart move for Microsoft to do this. And when it comes to you saying, oh, it's a dick move. It's a dick move for Microsoft to do it because that means less games can do it. Well, it's better Microsoft than Sony because when it comes to an Xbox game, you can then play it on probably the Xbox One, definitely the Series X, and also the PC. So more gamers can play exclusives from Microsoft than they can from Sony anyway. Because if it was Sony, it's just coming out on the PS5 and that's it. Go fuck yourself. So I would argue it's probably better that it's on Microsoft's end, especially because they're on the short end of the stick already when it comes to exclusives, when it comes to their platform. So what it's doing is it's actually evening out the playing field a little bit, which is exciting because it means Sony can't get complacent and is going to keep doing what they're doing and keep aiming for a high standard. And Microsoft's going to keep chasing them. Competition breeds better products for the consumers. So that's a bonus. I'm going to look at it that way. Now I can talk from a place of privilege, I guess, because I'm someone that can afford to have both consoles if I want to. I have, I have a PC. I don't necessarily even need a Series X, which is also a good thing. But that's the point. Is it better for Microsoft? Is it better to be Microsoft than it is to be Sony? And I think it is. Now there's a clip from the round table when it talks about what's exclusive and what's not, because there's confusion there. So David, if you could just hit play on that clip for me, please. This is from the round table with uh, Bethesda and Microsoft. Question since we announced this deal, but one of the one of the biggest ones, Phil, is this question about exclusivity and how you think about that and how that's going to work with, with Bethesda. Yeah, I see it. I see it in the community. I, I listen to the podcasts and all the questions. So I'm going to try to be as clear as I can because uh, I, I, that's what I, I just think it's fair. So obviously I can't sit here and say every Bethesda game is exclusive. We know that's not true. There's contractual obligations that we're going to see through, as we always do in every one of these instances. We have games that exist on other platforms, and we're going to go support those games um, on the platforms they're on. There's communities of players. We love those communities, and we'll continue to invest in them. And even in the future, there might be things that have either contractual things or legacy on different platforms that we'll go do. But if we're an Xbox customer, the thing I want you to know is this is about delivering great exclusive games for you that ship on platforms where Game Pass exists. And that's our goal. That's why we're doing this. That's the root of this partnership that we're building. All right, pause uh, it And the creative capability we will... So there's a couple of things, David, to break down here. Mm -hmm. The first one is contractual obligation. That's the first answer he gave. So what he means is that oh, they've just purchased them. This is like day one of Microsoft owning Bethesda. So Bethesda already have deals signed with other people. And I brought up earlier that there's deals such as potentially marketing of games that are coming in the next 12 months, 24 months, 36 months. That Bethesda have already signed, let's say, with Sony. So when you go to the cinema or you're watching a TV and you see Starfield trailer and at the end it's going to pop up a PlayStation 5 logo. That's Sony and them partnering 
that they're going to associate that game with that console. Now, they can't get out of that contractual obligation. What, what Microsoft have is they own Bethesda, which means they also own the contracts they have. They can't just forfeit those contracts. They've got to own them. So what, what, what he's saying is, what Phil Spencer's saying is that, yes, straight away, these games are not going to be exclusive. So for the next two to three years, these new Bethesda games are not going to be exclusive because they've already got contracts signed. Not because they don't want them to be exclusive. If, if Phil Spencer could make every game from now on this point from Bethesda exclusive, he would fucking do it. But there's contracts signed. They can't do it. They're already on platforms. They want to make sure you can play Skyrim on the fridge for the next five years. That's already happening. They can't change that. And they're not going to change that. They're still going to support it, whatever would be a live service or would be being functioned and worked on anyway. The point is, once those contracts are done, once they no longer need to support something on the Switch or something on the PlayStation, whether it's an online service like the Elder Scrolls Online and things like that, they're no longer going to. I'm sure the Elder Scrolls Online will stay on PlayStation because, like you said, legacy. And they still want people that have already been able to play it to continue to play it. But after those contracts are done and they've done their partnerships with Sony or whoever or Nintendo, wherever, every game from that point on is going to be exclusive, including the Elder Scrolls Six, most likely, to Xbox. Unless they've already got contracts on, which isn't impossible, but it's probably unlikely. So what, what I'm saying is, to read between the lines here is, for the next couple of years, Bethesda is going to look like Bethesda always have in terms of how they're partnering with people, other than you're going to get all your Bethesda games on Game Pass now, which is already a thing, which is great. But in a couple of years, you are no longer going to see new Bethesda games on anything but where Game Pass is because Microsoft's focus is not the Xbox, it's Game Pass. And Game Pass is on PC and Xbox. So if you're a gamer, you have a PC, you have an Xbox, you're going to get Bethesda games, and they're going to be exclusive to Game Pass, to you, and that's going to happen over the next couple of years. Not straight away, but that's what is going to happen. Is it a good thing? I don't know. Only time will tell. Will Bethesda make good games? That's the question that needs to be answered first. So I think it's better them than anyone, if I'm going to be honest, just purely because more gamers can play that than anyone. And clearly, Bethesda and Microsoft seem to like working together. So it's exciting. That's my thoughts on Microsoft buying Bethesda.